guys, I am back. Um, welcome to my channel. My name is Jasmine Tates and I am doing this series talking all about how to open and launch a six-figure cleaning company without you doing any of the work yourself. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, please go back, check out all the videos because each day I'm dropping a new video with new information and I don't want you to miss any of the previous information, okay? So save this for later, go back. All right, so I got a lot of questions from the last video that talked about the move in and move out. Like, what 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 did I mean by the move in and move out? Because I mentioned that in the video just, you know, casually. So move in and move out is a type of cleaning service that we offer. And I actually did like a test, um, a test niche-based cleaning company for a move out and move in only because here in the DFW, we have, you know, like downtown area, a lot of condos. Um, and we started partnering with different apartments and offering move in and move out cleaning services to where we just did move in and move out cleaning service. Move in and move out is probably one of my favorites because um, the home is required to be empty. Is it always empty? No. Do we require it to be empty? Yes. Do we charge extra if it's not empty? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so, a move in and move out cleaning is when somebody is moving out of their home or apartment or condo, or whichever, um, and they, you have to totally provide a cleaning service and then as a requirement for their lease agreement before they move. Um, and then same thing, when you move into an apartment, a company will either pay for it and normally they're paying for it as if you know, um, they like just purchase a home or something of that sort. Most times it's the client that's actually paying for it and they just want to make sure they're going into a clean, sanitized home. Look here, it's after the pandemic, but COVID is still alive. Okay. Now, <laughs> but um, it's, it's when the house needs to get clean before you go in. Now, the only thing, you know, with it being empty, you have more space to cover. Most people will say, oh, you know, I just need a, a clean, a, like a general clean because I'm moving out. Well, it's not general. Like I have more service area to cover. So it's not just a general service. Like we, we need to cover wherever your couch used to be, wherever your bed used to be. Like all of this service has to be cleaned. And you're literally cleaning from top to bottom. Now for me, with my clean move in, move out cleaning, I that was probably one of our largest ticket items. And I put in a lot of services, add-on services in there. Beforehand, it used to be just a regular move in and move out cleaning, and if they wanted baseboards done, or not baseboards, they wanted windows windows clean, that was extra. If they're wanting you know, something else done, it was extra. Where I changed the way I charge for it, and I would include all of it. So with the move in and move out cleaning, it was coming with baseboards, window sills, windows being clean, refrigerators inside of appliances being cleaned, um, ceiling fans, light fixtures, cobwebs, everything was being cleaned from the top up to the bottom. Um, and that was, you know, the cleaning service. But I loved it because it was a really a standard cleaning besides, you know, you're not, ex you're, whatever you're expected to walk into, that's a whole nother story. Um, but otherwise, it was just a pretty standard top, to bottom, gut, just full clean. Um, of course, if the home is more dirtier, then it, it would be an additional fee. If items are left in the home, like a whole bunch of trash, we would not clean that. I would, We would charge them with a counseling fee and they would need to get a junk removal company and come haul all that stuff out because we are not a junk removal company. In the beginning, when I really, you know, I was just trying to hurry up and get clients and I wasn't, worried about that so much we ended up in pretty bad situations where like i had a cleaner one time like hauling out like 13 bags of trash from like the apartment to the to the dumps to the dumpster and i think i only charged for maybe like an extra hundred dollars but it, it should have been canceled point blank period but like i said you know i was just thinking about short term i was thinking about me wanting to get that client and wanting to have the money and wasn't thinking about, you know, long-term. So 
if there's items in the home or junk in the home that we cancel, we charge a cancellation fee, and then that they are responsible that we're paying that we're taking that money out ASAP, and then they are having to um, call back and get another cleaning another cleaning book. But that's that's generally what a move in and move out. This is just a short video that I just got a lot of questions about that. Um, good ways to seek move in and move out cleaning companies is contact short-term rentals because that's kind of similar to like um, Airbnbs, like when a short-term rental, uh, like when a management company will like rent out a home for um, corporate to stay there for whatever, a project or something, that's a good to partner up with. Also moving companies, um, I partnered with a couple of moving companies before and I would give them a discount, not a discount. I would give them like a referral fee for a client that they brought over to us. Um, also junk removal companies, real estate agents, property management companies. Um, even, you can even do specialize in this is more kind of commercial field, but turn down cleaning services with like different colleges that's in your areas or dorms in your area. Um, just there's a whole lot of unique ways to be able to find leads for this type of service, especially like that's outside of like finding regular, you know, clients and regular ways to find your clients. Like those are some really good ways to build relationships to like an ongoing real estate, especially if you get in with a really good uh, property management company or a really good real estate company, um, those are really good ways to build relationships to continue to get those type of services. So that is all that I have for you guys today. Um, if you guys have any questions that you want me to go ahead and answer, just drop them below. Get into that Facebook group, drop them in there. I will answer them in there as well. And if you have any questions, hit me for one-on-one -on -one and I'd be glad to help you. All right, until next time, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the little bell, the little red button. Do all the things of all the things, and I will talk to you guys later. All right, bye.